Thank you for once again joining us for another Fabaro uh, webinar. Uh, today we'll be essentially generally covering the unboxing of the Home Center 3 controller, well, Home Center 3 Lite control. They'll actually be released, um, we're expecting in June this year inside of Australia. Uh, to start off with, uh, firstly, they, as you've probably noticed, they have changed the packaging for the device itself. Uh, it's a bit more minimalistic. However, considering you're purchasing the device and not actually purchasing a fancy box, basically it's sense for it. So the actual Home Center 3 system, so Home Center 3 Lite, is essentially a key and necessary element to a smart home, much like any primary controller is. Uh, thanks to its remote control systems and intelligent management of all device in your Fabara system, it is actually pretty much capable of doing what is mostly necessary for all automation systems. So the device itself is actually quite small and compact. I actually have it right here. Uh, your one will not have a little tick on it. That's a little bonus for me itself. So inside the device, well, inside the box itself, you'll find a couple of things. Firstly, you'll find the manuals for the device itself. Uh, there will actually be two of these. One will have uh, English on them and essentially in other necessary languages for uh, European countries as well. Then inside as well, you will also have the Home Center controller. So as you can actually see, Home Center 3 Lite is actually a quite a very small box. It's not very thick. And this is very easily to fit into pretty much any nook and cranny itself. Uh, on the back of the controller as well, you will notice, unlike the Homestead 3 system, the Homestead 3 Lite actually lacks a Ethernet cable port. It only has a simple USB port on the back of it. The reason for that is this device itself connects up directly through Wi-Fi. So to actually do default setup for it itself, you just need to connect up to the Wi-Fi that this device itself generates. Once you've done that, you'll be able to go through configuration and then assign it to your own Wi-Fi system itself. So put that off to the side. Inside the box as well, you'll also be getting a power supply as well and then a USB cable. Yep. So it's a simple five volt USB cable and there's also a power adapter in there as well. But for brevity's sake, I will just be simply connecting up this device. So the home set of light to my computer directly because it actually accepts the five volt necessary for it, which means that you can connect this once you've done configuring it up to a back of a TV to have support USB cable. So simply so gonna plug it in and it will start booting itself up. So while that's booting up, I should talk about some of the actual specs for the device itself. So firstly, the device itself uh, as a Fabara controller is, uh, it's the light version of the Home Center 3. It has all the same components that are inside of a normal Home Center 3, apart from a couple of different, but regarding Z-Wave, it's still able to control all your lighting systems, uh, all your roller shutters, heating, door windows, security, uh, watering systems, pretty much the, in the general things you'd expect from an actual Z-Wave automation system. It still has the whole package, even in a much smaller box itself. So one of the main differences between the uh, Home Center 3 and the Home Center uh, 3 Lite is the Home Center 3 Lite actually has the chip 700 model in it. Uh, what this means, you can actually get benefits of all the uh, added range, the reduced battery life of compatible uh, 700 chip series uh, devices. Um, unlike the Home Center 3 as well, the Home Center 3 Lite can only support the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. Uh, that's useful when you actually need to uh, connect up to most older systems. Uh, when you need to bridge controllers as well, you need to make sure they're on the same system as well. Uh, has a smaller single core um, driver. It doesn't need to run as much systems, less RAM, uh, and a smaller what is it, flash memory for it. Because the Home Center 3 Lite system only has a single system in it instead of two systems. Uh, the Home Center 3 system has system A and system B. This just has a single system running on it, so it doesn't need the extra space for it, which allows it to be a bit more compact as well. So the ac actual applications for the uh, systems differ. The Home Center 3 is primarily used for larger areas, houses, flats, uh, whereas the Home Center 3 Lite is recommended for small installations. Uh, the added range uh, that actually comes with the chip 700 does make uh, it more usable whenever it creates its mesh network. So even knowing itself uh, is designed to have less device on it, still means you still get the same general range for it. Uh, as you can see, the recommended number of devices on the uh, 
Chrome Center Lite is 40 devices. You can actually put more on there, uh, but it will give you a warning for it. Um, with regarding its communications as well, the Chrome Center 3 has the um, 500 chip set in and also has additional communication protocols. Whereas the Home Center 3 Lite only has the Z Wave protocols for it. So it won't be able to control nice gates. Uh, once again, the Wi Fi control for it as well, um, and then some specs regarding it as well. So another, another key note is that regarding scenes, it does recommend that you only have 20 scenes for automation, as it is a much smaller system. It only has a quarter of the RAM of the Home Center 3 system. Um, so it's recommended to have 20. You can go over 20 scenes, but once again, it'll start giving you warnings. You can only have one IP camera connected up the system. However, there are some plugins available for certain camera types um, that do allow you to have more cameras in the system. Uh, as is noted just below as well, you're able to have five plugins uh, in your system and you're only able to have 10 quick apps. Uh, those are not recommended. Uh, once you've actually added your one camera to your system, it will not allow you to add any more cameras unless you remove them. Um, once again, with it, uh, it's gateway connection methods. Uh, it will only be able to be a slave controller, which means you will not be able to slave multiple controls together. Uh, that are home center lights, you'll have to rely on an actual home center three. And regarding pricing, uh, as you can see there, the home center three's recommended retail price is around $1,200. Whereas we're expecting, uh, this will, we'll, we'll get a conf confirmation on this uh, close to his release date, but we're expecting it to be a below uh, $300 for its recommended retail price. Uh, once again, it will work pretty much with the pre existing uh, home set, what is it, the pre existing Fubara app itself. So, which means you'll still be able to use all your phones, tablets, smartwatches. All user profiles will still be compatible there, and all of your favorite scenes and devices will still be actually selectable. Uh, they are actually increasing the number of integrations available for your systems as well. So you don't have to worry about going over your quick app limit if you have a customization for it, because you'll be able to use those additional plugin slots as well for those systems. Uh, voice control is also standard with it as well. So Amazon Alexa, uh, Google Home, uh, and what is in the HomeKit compatible devices will also be able to work with Siri as well. So that's the talking portion, of, portion over. Uh, my unit has actually booted up, so I will simply show you some of the interface. So much like the previous system, uh, you can find it multiple ways. You can use the find.fabara.com area. You can use your remote access if it's already been set up for it. Uh, Fabara app. Uh, I'm just going to simply use the find.fabara.com. and wait for it to populate. As you can currently see, is a load up system. I have pre-configured this and there you go. My Fabara Home Center 3 has also popped up, the one that's just behind me as well. So I will simply open up the Home Center 3 light. And it will load up. So it pretty much has the exact same interface. Uh, there are some things that are slightly missing, such as you go into settings itself you will notice that uh, instead of the 16 steps previously, it lacks the SIP server based into it. Um, just for general automation uses, the SIP server isn't necessary. That was used for intercom uh, integrations. Uh, and you will also notice if I go to devices themselves, they lacks the menu in between the Z-Wave and the other for the nice transmitter itself as well, uh, as they are not standard in the Home Center 3 uh, light controllers. Uh, as you can see, there's currently a camera set up in the system. And something you would have noticed, which is slightly different from the previous uh, Home Center 3, is this little thing up here, which is limits. So as you can see, uh, 40 devices, one IP camera, and then integrations. So the 20 scenes, the 10 quick apps, and the five plugins itself. Uh, as you can notice, this guy is currently red. The reason for it is I've already preset up a camera on this. So an example, if I was to go to other device, try to add in a camera, uh, let's just choose other and then other, press save. It actually gives me a ping, essentially informing me that I cannot add additional devices unless I delete my previous ones for it. So you do have a hard limit on your actual cameras. Uh, with your Z-Wave devices, you can go over 40 Z-Wave devices, and this will just be an easy way of tracking and tallying uh, how many devices you actually have in your system. 
Uh, these are individual Z-Wave devices, so not Z-Wave nodes. So if you do have, for example, a uh, four-in-one multi-sensor, uh, it will only count as one device, even though you have the additional uh, three uh, methods to it. Something that is worth mentioning is later on this year, we will be getting what will be called a UB. Um, a UB will be the, uh, the Home Center 3 light controller but it will have integrations capable for uh, the nice four, what is it, 433 transceiver in it as well. And we'll see, you'll get more information about that later on as it gets closer to this release date as well. Um, so that is essentially pretty much uh, all of it. It's expected sometime in June. We are, what is and we'll probably be sending out a newsletter regarding an actual uh, set date for it, um, as we generally do of bombarding you guys with actual newsletters themselves. Um, however, you should be able to actually, uh, we'll, we'll be informing you of its exact date for its release. Yeah, so you can only have one camera on it. However, there are integrations available for certain camera types. Um, an example, Dahua actually has what is called a, what is, no, what is called, uh, Dahua has a plugin available for it um, that you can actually use. Hopefully, as they continue to expand the available devices uh, on that system, they will actually uh, add in more camera integrations. So an example, if you were using Dahua cameras, as a perfect example, you can actually have six Dahua cameras because you can have five of them using the plugins, and then you can have an additional camera taking up that IP slot. So um, it's generally compared to uh, from what I have used for its actual general operations, uh, much better than a Vera Plus. I haven't had a lot of time to actually fiddle with it, but from its general use, it loads up a lot faster. It sends through commands a lot faster. It seems so far I haven't noticed any slowdown for them. And overall, the interface itself just is a lot speedier. I'm not too sure. Um, regarding that, that would probably be a question to ask um, uh, Tony regarding that, though, considering his uh, constant push towards the uh, automation bridge being used on platforms, um, he'll probably have it up and running at some point in time. And like, he'll probably have it, it'll get released in June, he'll probably have something hooked up to it by July. He's already working on it. <laughs> okay, so there's your answer. So thank you for attending again. Hopefully, if you have any questions, you can feel free to call us. Um, there's not much to the actual control itself from the old Home Center 3 systems, but essentially its main price point for it is the fact that it is much cheaper for a step in control compared to the uh, old Home Center system, well, the not old one, the Home Center 3 system, which means that it's a lot more reasonable for a person to, instead of having to spend 1200 for their automation system for a smaller, uh, what is it, for an actual smaller apartment, they can spend a quarter of the price for it for a Essentially, so they'll be able to do the exact same system. Well, no, thank you for attending.